Okay, so today we're going to talk about density. Our essential question is how do you calculate and use density? So if you like Ms. Lassen, what does it mean to use density? Okay, well, we're actually going to use density as a conversion factor. Okay, so we're going to see the relationship between mass, volume, and density. Our vocab for this is mass, volume, density, and we're going to start learning about water displacement. So you should have already made your foldable. Now, unlike some of our other foldables, these aren't just going to go in order, so make sure you're following along as to which tab I am writing under. So we're actually going to start by writing under this density tab, okay, since that's what this lesson's all about. Put my calculator there. So the first thing is, what is density? Mm -hmm. Density is a property of solids as well as liquids and even gases. Okay. And it's the measure of how tightly the material is packed together. Really, density is a measure of how much matter occupies any given space. That's why when we write the equation, we say density equals mass over volume. My sister used to say density equals heart, because the M with the B at the bottom kind of made her think of a heart. And what this is telling us is that we are finding out how tightly the material is packed together. Another way, like I said a moment ago, to think about this is that density is a measure. Let's scoop this up. Okay. Is a measure of how much matter occupies a given space. Remember, if you have trouble reading my handwriting or anything, pull up that PowerPoint. Okay, you can watch the video and look at the PowerPoint at the same time. So this is kind of the basics about density. So let's dig a little bit deeper into what in the world does that actually mean. So the next tab I'm going to go to is mass. It's right here at the top. Open it up. So first... I said mass was one of our vocab words for this lesson. Excuse me. And mass is a measure of how much matter an object has. So mass equals I'm going to underline matter. Mass, matter. We measure mass in grams. Okay, so I'm just going to say measured in G. A G means grams. Now, if I want to calculate mass, if you've never used one of these before, this is called a math triangle. In a math triangle, anytime I have a horizontal line, I divide. Anytime I have a vertical line, I multiply. So if I'm looking for mass, I'm actually going to put my hand over mass, and I see that I need to do need to do density times, that's what this line right here tells me, volume. So my equation for mass is going to be mass equals density times volume. So we know that mass is the amount of matter an object has. We measure it in grams. And the actual equation that we're going to be able to use to find mass is density times volume. Now let's look at volume itself. So I'm going down here to the volume tab. So first, what is volume? So volume is our measure of space. Is the 
fishers. So I'm going to underline space because that's our main word for that one. Volume is space. There are two ways we can measure volume. Okay, lots of times we will measure it in liquids. And then we're looking at liters. Okay. But we can also measure volume by using things like a ruler or a meter stick. Okay, and get the dimensions. So think about measuring this box. Okay. I would take the measurement from this corner to this corner. Then I would take the measurement from this corner to this corner. And then I would take the measurement from this corner to this corner. When I multiply length times width times height, if I measured that in meters, it would be meters times meters times meters. So we actually write that as meters cubed. So we have that superscript of a three, Superman flies. Okay, and that's called cubic meters. You will normally see us using milliliters and centimeters for this, but liters and meters are our base units. Okay. So now let's see what our equation for finding volume would be. So I'm going back to my math triangle. Okay, I'm covering up volume, and I see that I have mass. This horizontal line tells me divided by density. Volume equals mass divided by density. So when I'm looking at density, I'm talking about how tightly packed is that material. How much matter occupies a given space. So notice down here when I'm talking about matter in space, I am talking about mass, because that is matter. And I'm talking about volume because that is space. So now, <coughs> now let's look at this corner. Using density to convert between mass and volume. So this is that use density part that we talked about for our essential question. I have put two example problems under here, so let's work this top one first. So it says a pure copper penny has a mass of 3.1 grams and a density of 8.93 grams per centimeter cubed. What is the volume? So the very first thing I do is write down my variables. I know I'm going to have density, I'm going to have mass, and I'm going to have volume. In my problem, it gave me my mass of 3.1 grams. Make sure I'm including my unit here. And it told me I had a density of, oops, of 8.93 grams per centimeter cubed. So what I don't know is volume. So I'm going to put an X right there. Okay. Now I'm solving for volume. So if I look at my triangle and cover up volume, I know that I need to do mass divided by density. So volume equals mass divided by density. Volume equals, I have my mass right here, my density right here, I will put that in my calculator, so 3.1 divided by 8.93, and I'm going to use two decimals, so I'm going to say that my volume is 0.35. Now I have grams here and grams there, so those cancel. So I'm going to have 0 0.35 centimeters cubed. Okay. So let's look at another example. An aluminum cube has a volume of 27.6 milliliters. I'm just going to go ahead and underline that. If the density is 2.70 grams per milliliter, underline that, what is the mass of the sample? So again, I'm going to say density, mass, volume. I have my density is 2.70 grams per milliliter. 
I don't know my mass, so I'm going to put an X. And I have my volume as 27.6 milliliters. If I'm looking at my math triangle, I cover up mass. I see that I need to do density times volume. So mass equals density times volume. Okay, I don't know my mass. I'm just going to put in an X. My density is 2.70 grams per milliliter. And I'm going to multiply that by the volume, which is 27.6 milliliters. Okay, since this is actually like grams over milliliters, our milliliters are going to cancel. And when I do that math, times, it's 74.52. Grams. Now, if you are struggling with units, just remember what units go with what uh, variable. So your density is always going to be some sort of mass divided by some sort of volume. Your mass is going to be some form of grams, and your volume is going to be some form of liters or meters cubed. Okay. So if that is where you are struggling, just be conscientious and try to match up those units with those variables. Now let's look at that water displacement. So I am down here at sample problem number one, calculating density using water displacement. I'm going to turn it over. This says 150 milliliters of water are placed in a graduated cylinder. So remember our graduated cylinder is what we are using in the lab to get some more exact measurements. Okay, reading our meniscus, making sure we have that estimated or guessed digit in there. Okay. So 150 milliliters of water are placed in a graduated cylinder. When a 182.5 gram sample of a metal is placed in the cylinder, the water level rises to 175 milliliters. What is the density? So I'm going to go in and underline all of my numbers. And just like before, I'm going to say density, mass, and volume. Now it says what is the density, so I know that that is what I'm looking for. Grams tells me mass, so I have 182.5 grams. And now I need to find volume. Now this did not directly tell you what the volume was, but it gave you the information that you needed. So think about filling up a cup of water and then dropping a golf ball in it. That water level rises. The same thing is happening in this example when they put this piece of metal. So to find the volume, the milliliters, that that piece of metal took up, I'm going to have to say what was the volume after I put it in. It says it went up to 175 milliliters. Well, how much water did it start with? Okay, it started with 150 milliliters. This is telling me that this difference must be the volume of this metal. The volume of that metal is what changed this reading. So I'm going to subtract. So this is the volume of the metal in water. Okay, and then this is the volume of just the water. When I subtract that, I get 25 milliliters, and this is my volume of my metal, so I'm going to put 25 milliliters right here. Now I'm solving for density, so I'm covering up density, mass divided by volume. So density, mass divided by volume, okay. density equals, I got my mass from right up here. And I got my volume from right there. When I do that math, I get 7.3 grams per milliliter. Okay, so make sure you are using the units that I've given you. So this added a step to our 
calculations that we have been doing by making us find the volume. Okay. When I'm doing that, I'm pretty much doing that after measurement minus that initial measurement. Because I want to know what the volume of the metal plus water is, subtracting that from water. Now we're going to look at calculating density by measuring a regular shaped object. So that is sample problem number two. So if you flip that side up, this is going to be an example like I was talking about with the box. So it says a cube of iron is 28.7 grams. So I'm just going to go ahead and underline 28.7 grams. When the sides of the cube are measured, the length is 1.54 centimeters. What is its density? So again, I'm going to say density, mass, and volume. Well, the problem is asking for density. So now I'm going to need to put my x where density is. Grams tells me that that is my mass. And I need to figure out what this volume is. Now, one thing I have to think about is the fact that a cube has all equal sides. So if I'm trying to find the volume, I'm going to need to say length times width times height. Since it's a cube, all of these are going to be the same number, 1.54. So 1.54 centimeters times 1.54 centimeters times 1.54 centimeters. I'm going to put that in the calculator. is 3.65. We'll round that to two decimals. Centimeter times centimeter times centimeter is centimeters cubed. And that is my volume. So 3.65 centimeters cubed. Now again, when I look at density, I'm saying mass divided by volume. So density equals mass divided by volume. And I'm going to plug in what I put up here. So I don't know density. Mass divided by volume. I'm going to put that in my calculator. I get 7.86 grams per centimeter cubed. Remember, your units are part of your credit. If you just give me a number, I don't know what that means. Okay, you need to be specific about what type of measurement that is. So let's look at density graph. Got myself turned around. So you all should have printed a little bit clearer. Okay, this is mass versus volume of copper. Mass is on our y-axis, volume is on our x. You see that it gave you units, so mass in grams, volume in cubic centimeters. So that's the centimeters cubed that we were just talking about. And I'm just going to draw this in because hopefully yours showed up a little bit clearer than this one did should have a line that looks something like that. The biggest takeaway from this is that as my volume increases, my mass also increases. You're like, that's weird, Miss Isom. It's for this one key fact. Density is a constant. So what that means is that I could have a piece of lead the size of a pea, or I could have a piece of lead the size of a semi-truck. The density of that lead will still be the same. As volume increases, so does mass. Density is a constant. It does not matter how much you have. 
If you have any other questions, be sure to come and talk to me. Uh, you can check out the PowerPoint and the practice opportunities on campus.